Good morning. Over the past couple of days, we've been working on healing our bubble, our energy field. You know, when people get in your bubble and you're like, get out of my bubble. That's what we've been working on. And over the past couple of days, we've cleared out a variety of emotions from our bubble. But today we are working on the energy of neediness, which I heard very distinctly as I was kind of praying about what we were going to do this month. I heard we have to work on clearing the energy of neediness from the bubble, which is really interesting. I don't have a neediness session at this time, um, although go check alleydoesatclasses.com if you are watching this in the far future, because maybe I'll add one. But um, I've, I've never actually done a session on neediness for anyone. I don't think. So that's like kind of funny. I hadn't even thought of neediness as an emotion or like a real energy until I heard it so strongly to work on today. So we're going to work on the energy of neediness. You can go ahead and close your eyes and take a deep breath. And I'm going to tune in. And immediately I just see a huge wall. It just says, no, don't work on this. I don't want you to work on this. And it's us. It's ourselves saying, I don't want to, I don't want this cleared. And it just says, if you clear this energy of neediness, then no one will meet my needs. I need to have an energy of neediness so that people know I need help. I do. I need it. I need them. I need help. I need this. I need that. If you remove this from me, then no one will help me. And it's like very, um, it's really convinced of that, which I guess is how neediness energy is. I mean, I guess that's part of what neediness energy is, is a true internalized belief that unless we have that neediness, that our needs won't get met. So let's go ahead and send down a tube of light to all of us containing information on the requirements that must be met for our needs to be met. Does that make sense? Um, just recently, I went to church and I had this, um, the, the lady teaching Sunday school was talking about how um, she, she had this experience where she felt like um, she, she, she had this amazing blessing show up in her life. And then she thought, man, I wonder if I had read my scriptures more, if I would have had an even better blessing or, um, and she was like, oh man, I'm really glad I did read my scriptures these days because or else I couldn't have had this blessing. And she said, she felt the Holy ghost just like whack her in the face and be like, no, 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 no. That is not how this works. You got a blessing because you exist and God loves you. And like, not because of what you did or didn't do on a stupid checklist, you know? And so um, we're going to download that knowledge that we don't have to have needy energy to have our needs met. It's just not necessary. Um, we get to have our needs met because we're the children of God. And when our needs are not being met, a lot of times it's because we have, you know, messed up programming in our own minds, like our own agency is being used inappropriately. Our beliefs are not in alignment with reality. Our behaviors are not in alignment with reality and universal law. As soon as we clear out whatever is in us that's not consistent um, with reality, then all of a sudden things start aligning and working out for us. Okay, so our job is just to heal ourselves and to focus on putting ourselves in alignment with God. And we don't have to be needy to have our needs met. All of our needs are going to be met. All we have to do is show up and be ourselves in alignment with who we actually are and, you know, the universal laws. Like we just have to live in alignment with the laws of the universe. That's it. What are the laws of the universe? Um, I talk about this a lot in uh, my class, Intuition Accelerator, but a lot of them are things like the law of the harvest. What you sow, so shall ye reap. Like if you're planting seeds of awful stuff, then you're probably going to have a bunch of awful things grow up into your life, you know, um, including toxic thoughts. I mean, all of your toxic thoughts are seeds. Every time you think to yourself, I'm not good enough. Nobody cares about me. Nobody's going to help me with this. Like, those are seeds that you are planting and they will grow into trees of fruition and you will see for yourself how no one does help you. But it's not because no one was going to help you or no one is capable of helping you. It's because you had the thought, you you believed that no one would help you and your soul created that reality for you because that's how the universe works. The universe gives us everything that we want. And I don't know, what whatever our internal landscape looks like, we we plant those seeds and they grow up. Recently, I uh, taught a class on vision boarding in real life for Relief Society. <laughs> um, but all things are created spiritually before they are created physically. And if your spirit is constantly creating energy of nobody loves me, nobody takes care of me, my life is falling apart, my life will always be falling apart. 
It's in the scriptures. All things are created spiritually before they're created physically, okay? <sighs> you are creating a terrible physical reality and you have to stop. You have to you have to think a different way. And that's why you hang out with me because we're working on it. Um, and go check out alleydoesatclasses.com for like so many classes and stuff on this. But um, I don't know. The real point is we don't need to carry the energy of neediness anymore. We get to have our needs met because we're the children of God. We do not need to have whiny and needy energy all through our energy field to get people to help us. It's manipulative. It's gross. We hate it in other people. Like I bet you hate it in other people. <sighs> but all of us can tend to carry some of that. And maybe you don't. Not everybody, I think not everybody had worthlessness or despair in their energy fields. And probably not everybody has neediness in their energy fields either. But if you don't, let's clear it on behalf of your ancestral line or something. Let's take a look. Now that we just had a little lecture on it, neediness energy, are you willing to go? And I'm actually getting a yes. I'm actually like the neediness energy is like, oh yeah, I actually don't need to be here. Let's tap in. I know how to live without neediness in my energy field. I know how to live without needing neediness in my energy field. I know how to live without needing neediness in my energy field. My needs can be met without me being needy. My needs can be met without me being needy. My needs can be met without me being needy. Whew, let's do it again. My needs can be met without me being needy. Take a deep breath. Imagine that tube of light shining down with information on how to live without being needy. Let's breathe it in. I know how to live without being needy. Okay, that looks good to me. How do you feel? Are you feeling some shifts? What is happening in your external life that seems to be corresponding with the work that we're doing here? I'm just curious. I'm just wondering. I feel like the universe conspires for us. And it's always bringing us these situations to help us get really clear on what we need to change in our own lives so that we can move forward. So um, pay attention to what's showing up in your own life because it's there as a message for you and as a gift for you. It's not meant to make your life harder. It's meant to make your life easier because you are meant to take a step back and say, what are the thoughts I, I am thinking that are planting seeds that lead to this? And remember, we're on a time lag. You know, it's not like you can just think a thought and immediately have the consequence of that show up right in that minute. Sometimes it happens. I've had it happen like that before. And I'm sure you have too, where you're like, I sure hope that I don't roll a seven in Settlers of Catan and then like, you roll a seven, oh, you know, it happens. But um, but for most of the things that we see now, like your life right now is not so, like, it's not necessarily the match of your thoughts right this exact second. It's the match of your thoughts over time and like we're on this time lag, right? So as you heal your thoughts, your life is going to catch up with the healing that you're doing. But you know, as we move forward, we work on healing our thoughts. We notice how, what is out of alignment in our external lives. How does that reflect where we're out of alignment right now and where we have been in alignment, sorry, where we have been out of alignment in the past with the laws of the universe. Wow. I hope that made any sense. I'm like, what am I even talking about? I'm like going to confuse everybody. Never mind. Okay. I'll just see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, let me check my agenda. Um, ooh, tomorrow we're going to be clearing some memories from the bubble, some stored memories. So that's really exciting. And I will see you there. Have a good day.